worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who
miracle worker, way maker, 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 miracle worker. Even when I don't feel it's your work. When I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working.
is a song that comforts in the night. There is a voice that calms the storm that rages. He is Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He roars like a lion, he led as the lamb, he carries my healing in his hands. Jesus, Messiah, my Savior, there is power. you today and we thank you Lord we thank you so very much that God that you are a way maker you're the promise keeper you're the miracle worker God that you are there even in the midst of uncertainty even when we don't know our right from our left and up from down you are there you are solid you are true. You are faithful, faithful God. Father, it brings such comfort to know that we can count on you. God, that you've shown up over and over and over again. And Father, we can count on you to do that again. Oh God, we give you praise today. We give you praise and we thank you, Lord, that we're not in this alone. God, that we walk with you because you walk with us every moment of every day. We're so thankful, so very, very thankful.
I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come And knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands And this is my confidence You're still enough. Keep me within your love, and my heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith.
stands and great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands and this is my confidence you've never today the many many times that you have never ever failed father we thank you we love you and we just thank you and praise you father thank you that we've had time to worship together in song and father I thank you for the message that is to come and God I just pray that you would weave all of these things together and that they would be a sweet, sweet offering to you. Father, we just lift this time. We lift the praises that have been sung. We lift the, the words that are to be spoken. And Father, we lift the hearts and the ears that will hear. And just pray, Lord, that your spirit will move. Even though we're not all together in one place, Father, your spirit will move among the people. God, how we love you. How we love you. How we praise you. And thank you for being such a faithful, faithful God to us. Thank you for being our father, our friend, our healer, our deliverer, you are everything that we need. Father, thank you for being our Savior and for loving us so very, very much. We give this time to you and just lift it before you with our thanksgiving, with our praise. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Living Word family. Hey, looks like things might be loosening up vis-a-vis -vis the shelter in place order. We're still waiting on some details. We don't wanna to jump too quickly on this. We're sorting some things out. And in fact, I'm meeting tonight with the elders to discuss some things about moving forward from here, some possibilities and how to best go about this when we open the, the doors. Uh, and in fact, uh, keep an eye on your inbox this week. We'll do our best to keep you up to date and, and uh, there will be, when we get to that point, whether it's next week or at some uh, other date in the near future, there will be specific instructions about how we go about gathering that we need you to pay attention to. So as usual, watch your inbox, uh, get these messages, and uh, make sure you're staying on top of it. And of course, if you have questions, you can always email us, call us, what, text us, whatever. Um, and... Uh, also, I understand that even if it is uh, next week, there are some of you who won't be able to join us right off the bat because of uh, underlying health conditions or maybe you're just not comfortable with it. So we'll continue to make uh, these messages available to you in, in, in other ways like this or something else maybe. 
And uh, speaking of services, isn't it great to have our own team leading us in praise and worship this morning? I mean, thank God for all the great resources we have at our disposal and the things that we've been able to take advantage of and make available to you over the last few weeks. But it, man, oh man, it is so much more like being together uh, when we do it this way with our folks, with our team. So thank you, praise and worship team, for coming in here and doing what you did for us. And welcome once again to those of you who are not part of Living Word Family Church, but you're tuning in at whatever time. Always glad to have you with us and watching. And as always, if you have a home church, stay faithful, stay hooked up, see what you can do to continue to be a blessing to that church. If you are looking for a church home, hey, welcome home. We would love to see you when the doors at Living Word open and God hasten the day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time together and for your presence, for the your very real presence in our midst, in this room and in our homes uh, across the town and across the state. Uh, we pray, Lord God, I pray that you would touch us and, and, and reveal yourself in a very real way this morning, that your Holy Spirit would be alive and active and vibrant in our midst and speak to us, making your word come alive and clear and uh, taking root and bearing fruit in our lives as we receive it by faith this morning in Jesus' name. I want to say some things today to tie, kind of tie some things together that I've said over the last couple of weeks and the meat of this message, actually this whole message is not terribly long. This may be the shortest message I've done since we started recording these. Um, so bear with me though while I lay some, some groundwork that I think is kind of important, not only for what I'm going to say but for why I'm saying it. I have shared with some of you that this form of communication is a struggle for me, has been a struggle for me, not just because it's weird preaching to a camera and not just because I miss you. It does. It is weird preaching to a camera and I miss you like crazy. Uh, but because in the back of my mind, this still feels like it's being produced to be delivered to a broader public audience uh, for mass consumption, as it were. Uh, and I know our messages have been available online for quite some time, but that's typically geared toward people in our church who couldn't make it, who uh, have, were serving in children's church uh, or whatever. And uh, this, again, feels more like it's designed to go beyond the four walls of the church, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But, you know, open up the video on Facebook, whatever, it's 800 plus views, and I'm like, wow, that's way more people than we have. Uh, uh, any given Sunday here uh, at Living Word. But I know also that a number of those are probably repeat viewing. Some of those, who knows how many, are people that click on it for three, five, ten seconds and click out of it. I don't know. I, honestly, it, it's not a matter of it going to my head. It's just that it is exciting to think about the opportunity to reach more people. And thinking about that has at least two effects on my message preparation. One is... It, I feel compelled to return to some favorite themes that many of you have heard me address. Some of you, some of these you've heard me address several times. Um, and there's also a degree of self-editing that takes place. As far as returning to favorite themes, I'm not going to apologize for that. If you ever read the book of Second Peter, it's a tremendous letter. Some great wisdom and uh, practical truth. But it says right in there, Peter's writing it, I'm not sharing any new stuff with you. I'm just stirring you up by way of reminder, making sure you're established, that you remember these things when I'm gone. Take these important principles, same things you've heard before, and nail them down, as I like to say. And uh, when I'm talking about returning to these themes, there are things that they are near and dear to my heart, and I do get excited about sharing those with a potentially broader audience. And as far as the self-editing goes, that's a little tougher to explain. I don't mean to indicate to you that I'm watering things down, that I'm leaving things out, that I'm embarrassed about anything. I just feel like sometimes I'm having to explain some things or want to explain some things that I might not explain if we were meeting. I know you. I know my people. And I am called to be a pastor 
to Living Word Family Church in St. Joseph, Illinois. And people have said, wow, now you've got the opportunity to preach the gospel all over the world, potentially, through YouTube and all these other things. But really, even though that's exciting, that's your job. The job of the pastor, along with all of the ministry gifts, uh, as taught in Ephesians chapter 4, are for the equipping of the saints, the body of Christ, you, to do the work of the ministry, to preach the gospel. So where I might ask you from time to time, hey, uh, who did you share with this week? What, when was the last time you shared the gospel with somebody? And even taking it back a step, can you at least invite somebody to church? If this is an opportunity for me to go beyond the four walls of the church, what can you do? Can you share these messages with other people on your social media? Can you email them the links? If this is important to you, if this is an opportunity, maybe you lack the opportunity to share in person because of the social distancing restrictions, you can share these messages and others with your friends, your neighbors, and your family, and I encourage you to do that. Uh, anyway, all that to say this, I want to spend a few minutes this morning explaining something that I know most of you already know. So, but bear with me, because not everybody does know it. When people ask, what kind of church do you pastor? What kind of church is Living Word Family Church? I sometimes hesitate to put a label on us, because I'm not sure how they're going to hear that label. You could say charismatic. That's a nice, safe word. We are certainly charismatic when it comes to our worship style, when it comes to the fact that we embrace the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, not sure it goes far enough. Uh, you could say Pentecostal. Uh, certainly we believe in Pentecost. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a separate um, blessing from uh, the born-again experience. But there is certainly some specific baggage attached to the word Pentecostal when used as a denomination. Uh, actually, the best descriptor for our church, our kind of church, is word of faith. But, unfortunately, that has come to be associated also with some things that we don't embrace and I'll leave it at that for now. I might say something a little bit at the end. But I, it's not my intention to disparage any man, any ministry, or anybody else that's associated with what they call Word of Faith. I'd rather talk more about what it is than what it isn't. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll mention something a little bit about that later, uh, a, a specific example. But um, I'm not going to do a whole teaching today on what faith is. I'd like to assume that you know that or have at least a basic understanding of what faith is. But Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 1, gives us this definition. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Word of God tells us that the just shall live by faith, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is important. How important? Jesus, the Son of God, the teacher, the miracle worker, went to minister in his hometown in Nazareth. And according to Mark chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, it says, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. And stop there for just a second. This was their, their problem with Jesus. Talked about the mighty works by his hands. We're going to learn here in a second. They didn't see much by themselves. But they'd heard. They'd heard the rumors of the great teacher and the great miracle worker and, and the great prophet. And then when he came, they're like, well, we know this guy. It can't be him. Uh, we, we saw him grow up. We have a hard time associating that kind of importance and that kind of dynamic ministry with this guy. We know his whole family. We're offended by him. Verse 4, But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now, he could do no mighty work there 
except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching. Now, this was the same Jesus who healed multitudes on several different occasions and did countless miracles. But there was no faith here. There was no belief there. And therefore, he could do no mighty work. There was no expectation of a mighty work, so there was no mighty work. So at the root of the word of faith is, of course, faith, belief. Belief to the point that a word from God constitutes evidence. But it's not just an inward belief. We are to speak it out. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 says this, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. And verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In Matthew chapter 12, beginning in the second half of verse 34, it says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And finally, for now, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus speaking again says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says where it says three times in that verse now this statement was made the day after jesus had cursed a fig tree he didn't lay hands on it He didn't perform a complicated ritual or some long incantation. He simply spoke to the tree. He said, may no man ever eat fruit from you again. And he didn't say it in his heart. He didn't think it. He said it. It says specifically, the disciples heard him say it. And then when they saw it the next day, they were like, look, the the fig tree, master, the fig tree that you cursed. It's withered. It's shriveled up. And Jesus responded, Matthew eleven twenty three, Mark eleven twenty three, that perhaps the most powerful statement on the words of our mouth recorded in the Bible. But notice, it says, if you say and don't doubt, but believe, you can listen. You can say it and not believe it. You can believe it and not say it and get the same result. Nothing. What am I basing my belief on? Wait a second. If if my result is going to be nothing, remember, just saying it isn't enough. I have to say it, believe it. Just believing it isn't enough. I have to believe it. Can't believe it, not say it. Can't say it, not believe it. Still get nothing either way. There is, you've got to believe it and say it to receive it. And there's still one caveat, which is this. What are you basing your belief on? What are the grounds of your belief? Because... Frankly, I am capable, and so are you, of believing things that are not true. And I can say things in absolute sincerity and be wrong about them, and so can you. Believing it and even speaking what I believe are not enough. We have to speak and believe what is true. I've shared this illustration with you, uh, with many of you before. If I am standing on one side of a chasm... A canyon and I need to be on the other side this is what what I need is on the other side of this chasm what do I need I need a bridge I need something to get me from point A to point B and there's something between me and point B between point A and point B that prevents me from being there right now I need a bridge if the bridge is there but I don't believe the bridge is there or don't know the bridge is there it does me no good I don't get across If I believe the bridge is there, really believe the bridge is there, but the bridge isn't there, I don't get across. If I believe it too much and act in that belief, I get to the bottom of that canyon pretty quickly, but I don't get across. 
The bridge, listen to me, the bridge does not represent faith in this illustration. The bridge is not faith. The bridge is a word from God. The bridge is a promise. This is what I attach my belief to. All right? If there is a bridge, and I believe the bridge is there, I can get across. But am I across yet? Something's lacking. What is it? I have to walk. I have to move. I have to walk across that bridge. That is faith, putting, act, uh, putting action to my belief and action to what I know to be true, acting on a belief that is based on truth. Now, if we're talking about a literal bridge and getting from one side to the other, the steps are easy to see. It's there. I believe it's there. I want to be on the other side, I walk across, I obey, I put my faith in that, I literally walk across a bridge. But if the chasm is something else, all right, if I'm not talking about a literal canyon and a literal bridge, say what I'm dealing with is a sickness. Uh, I'm sick and I want to be well. Is there something, is there a bridge of a promise in scripture telling me uh, something that God has given me that gets me from here, sick, to there, healed. And there is. There is a lot of stuff in the Bible. For one thing, the best example is the whole ministry of Jesus, who, as we already said, healed the multitudes. One specific thing we didn't say today, but I think we said last week. If we didn't say it last week, we said it the week before. He healed them all. Everybody that came to Jesus for healing got healed. But not everybody in Israel got healed, let alone everybody in the world. Everybody that came to Jesus believing and expecting to be healed, asking to be healed, got healed. Now, and what, but it's important that Jesus said, I do what I see my Father in heaven doing. Jesus healed, first and foremost, to reveal to us the will of our Father in heaven concerning healing. All right? So, we also have... Uh, Scriptures that speak of God's will that we be well. Old and New Testament. Uh, that our healing was actually purchased with those stripes on, on Jesus' back when he was beaten before the cross. And we could go on and on. And if this were a message on healing, we would go on and on. My point is, if we believe, and I know that most of you do, that God has provided healing in the atoning work of Jesus Christ, we recognize when we are sick that there is a gap between where we are and the manifestation of that promise. If I am sick, there's a gap, a chasm between where I am and where I believe God says I can be. And the promise is the bridge. The manifestation is of that promise is on the other side of that chasm. And I believe the promise. The question is, practically speaking, how do I walk across the bridge? Whoever will say unto this mountain, I cross that bridge with the words of my mouth. I make the words of my mouth agree with the written word of God. That is what's known as faith's confession. Confession, biblically speaking, is not just talking. It's not just saying. It is agreeing with my mouth. 1 John chapter 1 beginning in verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, we usually focus on verse 9 there when we're talking about what happens when a Christian sins after he or she believes. This is written to believers. Uh, but seeing it in context brings out the meaning of confess a little bit better. The word confess is the Greek word homologale, which means to say together or to say the same. I agree with God no matter what the circumstances are. I may feel guilty I may even feel condemned when I sin, but 1 John 1, 9 says that if I confess my sin, if I, that is, if I agree with my mouth that I have sinned before God, then I'm forgiven. So after confessing the sin, 
then I confess, I agree with my mouth that I am forgiven, that I'm cleansed. Listen, I may experience sickness in my body, but the word tells me he sent his word and healed them. Psalm 103 says, who forgives all of your sin and heals all your diseases. So I confess, I agree with my mouth that he has healed me, just as I confess, I agree with my mouth that he has forgiven me. How long do we confess it? How long do you walk across the bridge? Till you get to the other side, right? Till you get where you're going. I will confess my healing till I see my healing, and I'll confess it every day. Keep walking, cross that bridge, keep speaking to your circumstances as long as you are speaking based on God's revealed truth. We find promises in God's word for provision, abundance, protection, healing, and we put ourselves in a position to receive the manifestation of these things by faith, which means speaking in agreement with the word of God. Now, all of this is just a review for what I really want to say to you this morning. And it's just, what I want to say to you is pretty short. Living Word. You're who I'm speaking to. Everybody else, this is true, all right? But who's on my heart is Living Word. Listen, I know some of you are facing some things. I know there are some, uh, some health struggles. Right here in our church, uh, there are financial struggles. There are relationship struggles. Uh, and I know deep down, you know what the good will of God is for your life. You believe. And there are times, though, when you're starting to feel weary. I get it. Believe me, I've been there. All I want to say to you today is don't stop in the middle of the bridge. Keep believing. Keep speaking. Keep on walking. Now, why? Why is it so important to speak that? Because it's a formula? Is it something that we have to do to say we did everything right? No, it's because there is power in the tongue. The words of our mouth really do have power. There is life and death, blessing and cursing, sickness and healing, provision and lack, all in the power of the words of our mouth. Now, another important aspect of this is agreement with one another. The Bible talks much about the power of agreement. If you are in faith, and I am in faith, we can join our faith together in agreement with God's word and speak it over one another. This is the joy. This is one of the precious things about being together, even like this, is we can make our needs known and speak into each other's lives because we are on the same sheet of music. We are in agreement, not just with each other, not just with what we want, but with what God's word says. Uh, I have often said that I try to be careful uh, I, I'm often careful about who I share prayer requests with because I don't want someone who doesn't believe it's God's will to heal to be praying for me when I'm sick. I don't need their doubt and unbelief. It doesn't mean they don't love God. It just means we can't agree in prayer about this issue. Now, you've heard, I'm sure, my goodness, going back many years, positive thinking gurus uh, who talk about your attitude. They're talking kind of the same kind of talk. See yourself as you want to be and speak positive things over you and your life. Uh, doctors will tell you that people with just a good attitude or a fighting spirit have a much higher chance of surviving uh, risky operations and even uh, uh, tough diseases. And this is just based on, uh, they're just thinking and saying based on nothing but what they really want. We're talking about agreeing on something that is declared by the one who made us to be. And he made us, he made these things true, categorically true. And uh, so this is something that we ought to be, there's more of an anchor there. It's not just our attitude, not just our belief. It's a belief that's attached to a reality. And that, by the way, is one of the caricatures of the word of faith that make me that makes me sometimes reluctant to use the label. I'm not ashamed to be word of faith. I just always want to know what somebody else thinks that means. There really is an idea out there and is unfortunately prevalent among ignorant people that word of faith means picture the world the way you want it to be and speak it into existence. All right? That's not what word of faith is. What word of faith is it takes God's revealed will and it speaks in agreement with that. 
And they are very specific areas of our lives we need to speak. And the things we speak have to come from God's word. The word of faith is not name it and claim it. The word of faith is claiming on purpose with our mouths claiming what God has already named. All right? Another thing you, you may have heard, uh, used to see this little sticker. I know I've shared this before. Bear with me. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I love that. But there was also a counter sticker to that or a little a quote that said, God said it. That settles it whether I believe it or not. That's clever. It's also not true. Uh, if, 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 you don't, if you don't believe it, it doesn't settle it for you. God's word is forever settled in heaven. But there are things that you will not see that will not be manifested in your life just because you don't believe them. So make sure you know what God says. Attach your belief to it. Confess your belief in it. All right. Faith-filled agreement with God's word spoken with our tongues and lips is what sees those things brought into our reality. Now, very quickly, isn't it interesting that the psalmist writes in Psalm 91 too, that I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He doesn't just write, he is my refuge. He writes, I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. In fact, since Psalm 91 is so prevalent nowadays, let's turn it into a confession. Something that we can speak over ourselves in faith. I think what you're going to see on the screen is Psalm 91 in the New King James Bible, New King James Version. I'm going to read it sort of altered as a confession. Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers, and under His wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not, not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. I shall trample underfoot. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Praise the Lord. Find other places in scripture to do that with. Psalm 103, he forgives all my sin, heals all my diseases. How important is this stuff? You know, the heart of the gospel is expressed in Romans Chapter 10, verse 9, and I'll read that here. I'll quote it here in just a second. The beauty and simplicity of salvation is wrapped up in a simple statement. We all owe a debt that we are utterly unable to repay. We need forgiveness that we can never earn, can never deserve. The promises are glorious, and they are many, but they are made to the righteous. And God doesn't grade on a curve. They're not made to the more righteous than others. Romans clearly tells us that there is none righteous, not even one. We think different things about our problems. We think differently about what we think we need. But what is messed up about us is that we are cut off because of sin from being in a right relationship with our Creator, the one who created us for Himself. Everything in life flows from that relationship or from that lack of relationship. If we really grasped that, our heart's cry would be the same as those to whom Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. What must I do to be saved? And Romans 10.9 says this, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How important is confession? How important is speaking? Our salvation. 
our salvation is made manifest in our lives through the confession by faith of Jesus Christ as Lord. I'm going to pray a prayer here to close this uh, sermon. And at the end of it, as always, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And if you want to make that decision today, if you would like to make that confession by faith unto salvation, pray it along with me. All right? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you again for your word. Thank you for challenging us, for changing us, for encouraging us and building us up. Thank you for this body of believers and how encouraging we've been able to be for one another. Uh, concerning the word that you've given us today, Lord, set a guard over our lips. Help us to pay close attention to the things we're saying and take seriously this truth that we are speaking life and death and blessing and curses every time we open our mouth and let blessing and life and healing and supply be pouring out of our tongues and let us speak those things in faith, in agreement with your word. Father, it's my prayer also, uh, not just that we eat the fruit of agreeing with, with your word, but that you make us uh, vessels to carry this life giving word to the world, that you bring us across the paths of people who need to hear it, and that you spark in them the belief that they need to be saved. And I pray, Lord, if there's anybody watching this now who needs to make that decision, who's desiring right now to be in that right relationship with you, that you would move on them to pray this, Dear Lord, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I want to be righteous. I want to be in on the glorious promises you've made, and I want to spend eternity with you in heaven. Lord, come into my life. Fix me. Change me. I give myself to you. I confess right now that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe that you have raised him from the dead. Come into my life and change me. Be my father. Make me your child. Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my prayer and saved me. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, welcome to the family. We'd love to say welcome to the church. Either way, let let us know. Write us a note. Shoot us a comment, an email, whatever. We're easy to find. Let us know how this uh, broadcast has blessed you. And we especially want to know if you've given your life to Christ since you've started listening. Living Word, oh, maybe next week. We'll see. Someday soon we are going to meet again. Meanwhile, thank you for your continued faithfulness, your continued communication, your continued financial support. You are a blessing. I don't like going through this business, but there's nobody else I'd rather go through it with. We love you. We miss you. God bless you. Hey, everybody. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you so much for being a part of this church family, of this body of Christ. We are excited very soon, hopefully, to come together again with you. Just like Pastor Scott said, it is such a blessing to see how tithes and offerings continue to come into the storehouse, continue to come into the church to support what Living Word Family Church is doing in our community and in mission, uh, with missionaries and, and, and uh, other ministries all around the world. We are excited to continue that support even through this challenging time. If you are interested in giving online, you can do so by going to our website, livingwordfamily.org, and in the top right corner, you'll see a link that says Give. That will take you to Tithely, uh, which is an online giving platform that we, that, that we use. Uh, you can also go onto your App Store or Google Play and download the Tithely app there. Get everything set up, and you'll be ready to give in a matter of minutes. It's very easy to do, simple, safe, secure. You can also mail a check. You can get onto your bank account and, uh, and set Living Word Family Church up as, uh, as one of the automatic checks that you send out um, on a weekly basis or what have you. Any, whatever way is easiest for you, we want to be able to, to be there and, and, and receive that from you. So thank you for being such a blessing. If you have any questions on Tithely, on how to get it set up on Tithely, feel free to email uh, email me, uh, go through the church website, to fill out that contact form, and I'd be more than happy to walk you through that process. Thank you again. We appreciate you. We love you. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the amazing faithfulness that you have shown us, continuing to provide and meet our needs, Father God, even through this uncertain time. I also want to thank you for the amazing, amazing church family that we have at Living Word Family Church, and thank you for the awesome faithfulness that they are showing and continuing to send tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Father God, for the work of the kingdom, and we thank you for that. We thank you that your faithfulness 
will shine on them as well and shine on all of us who continue to give. We are excited about what you have in store for us in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again, and we'll see you soon.